Question. How is a sculpture like a mathematical proof? Answer. This is my sculpture Comet. It consists of nine different powder-coated, laser-cut aluminum orbs spanning over 100 feet at Albion College. It flies through the room, trying not to harm that flying dinosaur. There's just a slight change in geometry from each ball to the next. And the color varies smoothly from red at one end through shades of orange to yellow at the other end. The assembly was really cool. I invited the campus community to help me with the sculpture barn raising where we put it together one Saturday morning in September 2008. Over 100 people participated. Each orb consists of 180 large pieces, 120 small brackets, and 600 nuts, bolts, and washers, over 18,000 parts in all. So you can see why I needed lots of help. The parts interweave differently for each ball, so I had to give each group individual assembly instructions. You can see I was running around very fast from table to table. It took about six hours altogether for the assembly. I had already picked the locations and arranged for chains to be hung in the ceiling, so the building guys could lift each ball and hook it into place. Before the assembly, I did lots of design work and planning, including many computer models that I kept tweaking until everything looked just right. This is the ninth ball, which I think of as the culmination of the sculpture. If you look carefully, you can see how it has large openings and more relaxed curves compared to the eighth ball, which is closed and more tense. From the eighth to the ninth, the change is something like a flower bud opening. You should see some familiar forms in the yellow ball. There's a regular dodecahedron made of 12 curvy edged pentagons. The dodecahedron vertices are marked as circles. There's also a regular icosahedron consisting of 20 curvy edged triangles. Its vertices are marked as stars. The dodecahedron and icosahedron are in dual position. That means each has a vertex in the center of a face of the other and their edges cross each other at their midpoints. To read the sculpture, you must see these as givens, well-known elements that form a starting point. In the next orb, the stars have puffed up to be much larger and the circles have straightened to become triangles. Then in the third orb, a triangle edge and a star edge have crossed over each other, so now they're linked. Students sometimes find that inserting a paper airplane helps them understand this tricky step. In a similar way, each orb can be seen as a development from the previous step. So the sculpture is a metaphor for the mathematical idea of a proof. For over 2,000 years, mathematicians have found clarity and certainty in this technique of starting with well-known elements and making a series of step-by-step -step operations that lead to a surprising and worthy result. Proofs are the core of mathematical understanding, so I wanted to make a sculpture which celebrates this idea. Images can't really capture a sculpture's three-dimensionality, so to see its details, I invite you to visit Comet in the Science Center at Albion College in Michigan. Start at the yellow end and observe how its circles, stars, dodecahedron, and icosahedron are all made from flat shapes. Then find the differences in each adjacent pair. Curves bend, arms stretch, holes appear and expand. A series of steps takes you from a simple beginning to the final orb. I'm very happy with the result. Mathematics and art go hand in hand. I'll show you a paper model I made as proof.